right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another Learner Center collaborative webinar with some special, special guests. We've been gearing up for this one for a while and so excited that we are finally here. It features some of our Learner Centered friends. We got two of them in the house today, and I guarantee that this webinar is going to be fire. So for all the guests that are logging in right now, we're excited to have you. My name is Marlon Stiles, a proud partner at Learner Center Collaborative. Before we get to introductions, we want to welcome you into our Learner Center space. In the chat, you could drop in there for us your name, who you are, what you do, and where you're from. We want to welcome you to the webinar. For our guests, if you see anybody that looks familiar, let's throw them a shout out, either uh, here on camera, come off microphone, say what's up to them, or drop them a shout out in the chat. Again, if you're a guest, welcome uh, in the chat. Let us know who you are, where you're from, and what you do. Hope you guys are all having a great day as well. Zoe, you having a good day so far? Absolutely. Love it. Buffy, how about you? Having a great day? Something like that. <laughs> something like that. Something like that is like a little higher than a great day. So I'm glad you're having that <laughs> something like that great day, which is a little bit higher. We saw Sandy Seema pop in there, a friend of ours from the Learner Center Collaborative team. Excited to have you here, Sandy. Thanks for joining us. We are here today and uh, we're going to have some great conversation. We're going to dig into some conversation, some topics to feature some dynamic things happening with our Learner Center friends from SEEKS. We're going to have some conversation around cultivating meaningful learning experiences with our Learner Center friends from Hawaii. I want to start with some introductions. I want to give you the floor right now to introduce yourself and again, who you are, where you're from, what you do. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Buffy, we're going to kick off with you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Thanks for inviting us to join. My name is Buffy Cushman Pates, and I am the uh, now the executive director, but more importantly, I think the founder of Seeks, the School for Examining Essential Questions of Sustainability. We are a middle school, public charter middle school in the great state of Hawaii in Honolulu, and um, this is our 11th year of existence. Prior to being a school leader, I was trained as a geologist and then as a math and science teacher in public, private, and uh, independent public, private, and charter schools in Hawaii. I pass to Zoe. Uh, good morning, everyone, or afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Zoe Ingerson, and I have been at SEEKS for the past eight or nine years, nine years, I think, at this point. Um, primarily, I was an English teacher and a department head for our Essential Questions of Sustainability course. And this year, that's a class that I've been supporting teachers in. And I've also been supporting uh, professional development initiatives, um, partnering with schools who want to come visit and check us out. And I'm really excited to talk about all things SEEKS today. We're really excited to have you two join us today. I mean, special treat when we sent the invite out and you said yes. We were so excited to have you on the show. Before we frame up our conversation today, I just want to say what's up to our good friend from the Kentucky Department of Education, Rob Collins. I saw you in the chat. Excited to have you here. Uh, looking forward to uh, some ongoing connection with you around other opportunities to partner with the organization. Thanks for joining us. Our conversation today is kind of uh, as follows. We're going to take some time for a special treat, and we're going to dig into a Q&A session with our two dynamic leaders. We're going to pick their brains about some unbelievable things happening on their campus. We're going to pull some strategies, some frameworks, some approaches, some ideas, some big, way above the uh, line ideas that they have about things they want their kids to be able to experience on their campus. We're going to have some Q&A with them back and forth. I got a special treat uh, that we're going to surprise the two of them with here uh, with a little bit of gaming, uh, gamingship. Uh, at the end before we uh, move on to the next phase of our webinar. Uh, so as you uh, as you listen, pull some content from uh, the conversation, pull some ideas from the conversation. We're here to offer you just different strategies and approaches. So we're going to dig into some conversation here in just a few moments. The second half of our webinar is going to be very unique. We're going to pause the conversation. We're going to open up two break uh, breakout rooms. Uh, we'll share what the topic of each breakout room is going to be as a participant. You have the opportunity to choose which type of topic you would like to dig into a little more intimate conversation with our guests. They'll share some deeper strategies, some templates, some resources, some links in those breakout rooms. That breakout room is a chance for you to engage in some conversation with them back and forth outside of just the standard webinar Q&A. So we want to give you a chance to get up close and post personal with our leaders. So with that being said, Buffy, are you ready? Yes, let's Buffy go. Said yes, if Buffy says yes, we're ready to go. Zoe, are you ready to get this thing rocking and rolling? Absolutely. All right, here we go. Buffy, you're up first. I'm going to toss you a question. Uh, yes. You know me, I really like to quote people. And Buffy, 
uh, we visited your campus uh, a while back and I heard you say something that just just really caught my attention. I think it's worth bringing up right now. And I'd like to just repeat a quote that I heard from you. Um, and I'm going to toss you a question and, and see what your response may be. I heard you say real world situations and real world contexts drive real world learning. Let me read that again uh, for our guest. Buffy said real world situations and real world contexts drive real world learning. Buffy, can you talk to us about how your core beliefs and philosophies show up in the everyday experiences of your students? Sure. Yeah, that's our it's our first founding principle, real world situations and real world context enable real world learning. It is really kind of the, the reason I started a school <laughs> is because I felt like in my own teaching experiences, also my own learning experiences uh, as, a, you know, I went through all the K-12 and college and post-college systems and felt like, when do we get to do the real world stuff? Because life is real world. You know, kids are living their real worlds every day. So why do we not show it to them why do we make this school this separate like contained place and so at our school kids are doing real world stuff every day i would say the question that is most commonly not asked at our school is why do i need to know this they don't ask that question here they know it from the things that they're doing it's so clear in evidence specifically our school has a project-based interdisciplinary class built into the end of the day, four days a week, where, that we call EQS, where students are examining essential questions. They are going on field experiences. They are engaging with community partners. They are doing meaningful projects that are relevant to the world they live in, the place we live. Um, and, you know, for example, Last Friday, we had students on, you know, they're going on field trips all the time. We have vans for our school that really makes that possible in this afternoon block. But, you know, last week, students from EQS Clean Energy went to the uh, living building challenge uh, in a neighborhood nearby where somebody has built a, a home using as much uh, reusable, sustainable materials and products as low energy as possible. And they went and toured that on Friday afternoon while another group was on a hike looking at the invasive species. Um, so these are the things they're studying in their EQS courses, and they're actually going into the real world, engaging with experts on these things. Like That's just one example, so we could probably build on that easily. Um, yeah, I was thinking about different projects too, because that class is a project-based course. And so those real world situations then help students kind of think about the bigger impact and actually what their place is in our place. And so I had some examples that I wrote down, um, but we had one year where the students started a big mini farm and they grew food and made a meal to feed our community at the end of the school year. And so everything that they cooked was then part of that, you know, meal that we had. Buffy smiling because that's my favorite, I think, course that I taught. But it was so impactful for students because they didn't just know that we need to think about where our food comes from. They didn't just have to know, you know, in Hawaii, we import a lot of our food and that's a problem. They actually felt it. They knew what the pitfalls were in growing this certain thing. You know, they really understood it in such a deeper way than they could have had they just been reading about it and then be expected to go then and solve our food crises in the future, right? Uh, they're living this right now. Um, other examples I had, we had years where we did, had students design and do plantings. We did rain gardens at a school one year. Um, we have had students plant a native garden at the botanical gardens that are are adjacent to our campus. And so it's really getting students outside and getting them connected to the place they live in. Um, we're also really fortunate that we have a bank right now of community partnerships that we really depend on and that we're not the overall, our teachers, you know, we're not experts in every single native and invasive species. Our teachers are not always experts in clean energy, but we know how to partner with those organizations. We know how to partner with folks that we can really do meaningful work with and have a mutually beneficial um, partnership too. I want to add just really briefly, like, you know, we have this EQS course that not everybody has, but we also have English and social studies and math and science classes. And our students are also doing real world things in those classes as well. So for example, our social studies class right now, I'm not sure exactly what the project is, but I know that 
uh, I mean, I'm not sure exactly what the unit of study is. I think it's about colonization and they're examining is Guam a colony? I think that's ex what they're doing. And they're writing letters to our senators. You know, I mean, this is this is a very manageable, attainable project for folks that don't have a class like ours to do. But like, that's the real world. Hey, they're analyzing this question and really thinking about this and they're doing something about it. We're teaching them about like, here's how you can communicate with folks. Just Absolutely. A, yeah. uh, you got more, Zoe? Keep going. Sorry. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, every we there's a lot of projects, you know, where we want our students to go change the world. But sometimes projects are also just fun. Like as an English teacher, we write stories. We read science fiction books and write our own sci fi stories because that's also real world. You know, enjoyment of writing for the sake of that is also something that's valuable. And like I read for fun in my in my spare time, that's a real world thing for me. And so we try to also balance it with students that, you know, not every second of the day has to be these huge complex issues. Sometimes it's, you know, great to write a story because I want to convey this message and some, I want to write about something that's important to me. And so we really try to balance and give students opportunities throughout the day um, that, you know, real world means a lot of different things. Yeah, so, so let's chew on this uh, for, for just a quick moment, right? You talked about all the experiences that students are getting, unique courses, uh, dynamic schedules that allow students to have experiences in and outside uh, the walls of the school. You talked about different projects and real world experiences that the students are, are, are really getting uh, e exposure to. Can we shift the conversation a little bit around some featured pieces on the campus? You talked about sustainability skills. Uh, I know you have a really unique approach to uh, portfolios, defense of learning. Can you just take some moments and just kind of showcase for our participants um, just just some of those features um, and, and, and maybe demonstrate to them or just kind of highlight uh, some of those different approaches and experiences that students are having with their with their staff? Either one of us could start here, but I'll start with sort of like, I'll start with where we started, which was in our founding year of SEEKS, which was 11 years ago, we knew that we wanted to do something like a portfolio defense. And so we worked with Envision Learning Partners at the time and um, basically brainstormed as a faculty, like what do we, our, our vision statement of our school is uh, seekers will be stewards of planet earth and healthy, effective citizens of the world. And so we brainstormed, what does it take to be that? Like what are, what is the graduate profile? What is the learner profile in order to become a steward of planet earth and healthy, effective citizen of the world? And we did an affinity protocol and, you know, all the things, you know, there were a hundred things and we pulled them all together and we pulled them into what we now refer to as our sustainability skills. And those are things that are really gonna be similar to anyone else, communicating powerfully, collaborating productively, managing effectively, reasoning analytically, and thinking systemically. I think that thinking systemically one is really, really hones in on the, you know, the, you can't think about sustainability without thinking systemically. So um, I'll let Zoe then talk a little bit about like how that plays out in the student experience. Well, I think throughout the student experience, there is a consciousness among classes, you know, that when at the small scale, right, we do a project in English class and we as teachers connect that to one of the sustainability skills and bring students awareness to, okay, how did we communicate powerfully in the story? How did we not communicate powerfully in the story? And students are really accustomed to writing reflections about those sustainability skills to try to build an understanding. And over the course of their time at our school, they... The, our goal is for eighth graders to leave with a personalized understanding of those skills. And so in their eighth grade year, they compile a portfolio and they do one reflection on each of those skills that they connect to what we call an exemplar project. And so they choose a project that they reasoned analytically in, that they communicated powerfully in, um, that they thought systemically in, and they compile a portfolio of reflections that then is assessed and they do a defense at the end of the school year. And so it's a 15 minute presentation with a full Q&A and a panel deliberation where they defend their readiness to move on and say, you know, as a part of our school, I understand at least what these mean. They don't have to be able to do them because that's an ongoing lifelong process to be able to communicate powerfully and do all these big picture things, but they need to be able to internalize them. And so we really work with our teachers to incorporate that and have consistency throughout. And so there's five skills. Those are consistent. We have reflection templates for teachers, right? That they, and so that students know what to expect so that teachers can scaffold those appropriately. And it's really just an embedded part of our curriculum and our eighth grade defense. I mean, it's one of the coolest things at the end of the school year. Um, 
you can see on our website different examples of those portfolios, but it's amazing. I mean, eighth graders really thinking and being really self-aware about their own understanding of these big ideas. Would you mind just, just maybe featuring uh, an example of, of a defense that just kind of help our participants kind of really connect to some of the topics you, you threw out earlier? Absolutely. Let me pull up a, um, do you want to add anything while I pull something up, Buffy? I could add so much. Um, what, I, what I'll add is this, that right now we're just, we're not just, right now we're in middle school um, and our students defend their readiness to move on to high school by defending that they have a personalized understanding of the sustainability skills with evidence and exemplars from their projects at SEEKS. When we add high school grades, we plan for 10th grade there to be a defense. And in 10th grade, they will have to defend that they have uh, they're succeeding in at least two of the sustainability skills in order to earn the right to do internships during that EQS block during their junior and senior years. When they're seniors in high school, they will have to defend that they are proficient in all five of the sustainability skills. So it's a progression. And our eighth grade defense process is really designed to help them think systemically about their own work and reflect deeply about uh, these competencies that are beyond just, I learned math, I learned science, I learned English, um, but instead, like, how am I growing as a person? How am I becoming a better steward of planet Earth and healthy, effective citizen of the world? That's the big idea of this portfolio defense process. Many parents yeah, reflect on it and say that, like, I didn't have to I didn't get the experience to do this until I was in like grad school and wow how powerful that they get to do this now also let's let me just say this every student ultimately passes in their portfolio defense because we support them in redoing it over and over again until they do I mean that is it's just sort of our expectation is that you will pass this and we are going to help you. And some of them have to defend three times. Some of them have to resubmit their portfolio two or three times. So, uh, but but that is an expectation in order to leave SEEKS in eighth grade is that you have successfully defended your readiness to move on to high school because we helped you with that. Um, and in the chat, I've put in a couple different links, hopefully Buffy, or these are ones that we've shared before, um, but a student's portfolio from last year, it's a Google site. And then a clip from a defense, it's a loom recording because the student, we cut out their first and last name or their last name um, from the recording, but just to get a sense of what that introduction might look like. And so just to give some clarity, the portfolio, they submit before spring break and that gets assessed over spring break. Um, we have a whole teacher professional development day to calibrate and have time to assess all of those. And then in May, we have a full day where it's all just eighth grade defense presentations. And so teachers are panelists, we have community panelists. And so that clip that I shared is just a short snippet of what that day kind of feels like. And so there's, everyone's doing their defense that day and it's pretty spectacular. I'm gonna build off that word spectacular. I mean, we're in such, such a treat to have you two really showcasing uh, the types of experiences you provide your learners at SEEKS. Um, I really want to focus in on the leadership right now um, and not necessarily the what, but just more the, the leadership. And I really want to draw your attention to is a very key enabling condition that would have to be present on this campus for the adults in order for the student experience to be so electric like what we're hearing. So Zoe, can I lean on you for just a moment and really talk about how at SEEKS uh, the leadership is really committed and how they're building capacity in the staff? Yeah, I think, well, one thing, a lot of things make our school special, but one of the main things is that we are a mission-driven charter school. And so we have really clearly defined what our values are, what our structure is. And so when we think about professional development, we have the privilege to really thinking about it within that context. And so we're not grasping at straws for, oh, we should add this thing, we should add this thing. We're really centered on what our school is, who we are, what do we value, and what do we know about how kids learn? What do we know about how teachers learn and get better? And we drive from that. And so I think what really helps our school be unified is that we have that unified vision. And I know not every school has the luxury of having that. I mean, there's always, we also have hardships in our school, but that's something that is not one of the difficulties, right? We know where we're driving from. And so 
rather than thinking about, well, every year, what are our new initiatives? What is the thing we're going to focus on this year? We think about that core set of values and we consider, okay, well, where do we want to grow within the scope? And so within portfolio defense, within our um, standards-based learning and grading, within all these things that we're already doing, where do we want to in where do we want to improve? And because we value collaboration, it's one of our sustainability skills, we also spend a lot of time on it. I think is one of the biggest things for our capacity building, our professional development, is that we have a lot of professional development days for teacher. Our school day is slightly longer for students, and so we are able to turn some student days into teacher days. And so at the beginning of the year, then we don't just have those two or three days back where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get my classrooms together and just go. We have seven and we have an extra day for new teachers. And those days we really set up those structures that then are going to set the groundwork for the year. And we don't set, here's the 5 million things we're doing this year. We say, okay, here's what we're doing and here's where we're gonna improve. And like last year, we had a big focus on trying to improve some things in our EQS course and having the projects be more well-defined. And so all of our essential question of sustainability PD was centered around that idea and centered around the project planning, you know, cause you gotta, you can't do it everything in one year. You have to prioritize and you have to know when is overwhelming for teachers and for staff. Um, I know Buffy, you have lots of things to add. I'm looking at my notes. Um, we also have a curriculum for new teachers because at our school, it really requires teachers to collaborate and be so unified in what they're doing. And so we have a whole curriculum for teachers in their new semester. They meet weekly, um, once after school, or sorry, first quarter weekly, second quarter, they meet bi-weekly, and then as needed at the rest of the school year. And they receive a professional development credit for that time. And as our way of compensating for that acknowledgement that like your first year at our school is going to be hard because there's a lot of things that you have to learn as part of that unified vision, the language that we use, the rubrics, the learning management software, right? All of these things that we value. Something else I was gonna say is that because something we've learned throughout the time is that just like you might wanna spiral a curriculum with students, for example, we also try to do that with our new teachers um, that we may touch on something at the beginning of the year and say, you know what? Now, just know that it exists. This is not something to be really diving and deep in, to really acknowledge for teachers like, hey, know that you know portfolio defense is coming second semester. Right now, your classroom norms are more important right now. And so we really try to do the prioritization for teachers because Buffy and I were both teachers. We understand what it feels like to be at the beginning of the school year and to sit in those faculty meetings and to really think about like, what's gonna be the best use of our time what's good collaboration time together and what should have been an email, you know? And so we really yeah. try to triage those things as well. So I'll build on that and say that, you know, I, I, um, I didn't, I didn't, I never planned to be a school leader. It was never my like life stream to become a school leader, but I did have ideas about what would make a school really good. And so I, worked really hard to like sort of put the conditions and systems and structures in place to create the school that I wanted to work in. And then it became clear that, well, I needed to lead it because I was the person who had the clarity of vision. And so that's how I'm in this role right now. But part of my confidence um, in becoming a school leader and becoming a leader in general was when I realized that the things that I knew about how to work with students in a classroom were actually the same thing that work with adults. Like there's, because I worked mostly with middle and high school students when I was a teacher and that everybody likes to be treated as a human. Everybody likes to have their voice matter. Everybody likes to be a part of a conversation rather than being talked to. Everybody likes to do hands-on things. You know, everybody likes to have their time valued. All of these things are things that like I knew because I worked with young people and I could build, my, I built my confidence in working with a group of young people. And then I had to go through a separate sort of learning curve of, as an adult of, of working with adults and realizing those same things, those same structures we, and so we, I call it parallelism uh, in our, in our school, this sort of like every student in our school starts every day with sitting in a circle of, of a small group where they have a greeting prompt and everybody gets greeted by name and a sharing prompt and everybody shares something with each other. Guess what? We do that every time we have a faculty meeting as well. 
every meeting of adults in our school, we also do that. We do it at our board meetings for my school. <laughs> like everything has these same sort of basic structures. We also have plus deltas built in feedback. I mean, I admit that I didn't exactly do that with students in my classroom, but like everybody wants the opportunity to give feedback. So the structures that work at one level of an organization work at many levels of an organization. And that's what sort of that's a fundamental philosophy of our school. I think is sort of I think of our school as kind of a democratic school. Actually, I built the fundamental principles of Sikhs were designed in a course called Building a Democratic School, Linda Nathan's course. <laughs> Thank you too, for, for taking a moment to highlight. We're, we're at the point now we're going to uh, shift to our breakouts. Before we do that, uh, I'd like to have just a little bit of fun with the two of you. Just kind of showcase how unique your relationship is, how great you collaborate with one another. And just more importantly, I think you got to demonstrate that here in the first part of the, the webinar, but just how you feed off of each other and speak the same visionary language. Uh, you live your values and your beliefs. So this is going to be a test for you real time. Uh, we're going to throw a question now, and it's going to be a, a fun game. And we're going to start out with, uh, with, with Buffy. Buffy, I'm going to throw you a sentence. I'm going to throw you a question. You just have to finish it. Uh, Zoe, based on her answer, I just want you to give us a thumbs down. Let us know if she... <laughs> if she is accurate or she's like way off in left field. So uh, Buffy, here's a question. What would Zoe say is her favorite part of the Sikhs school day? Reading and writing workshop with English students. I would say yes. <laughs> Zoe, did you text her that? Did you, did you like throw that on I the side? Not. She I got that not. right, right off the bat. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, Zoe, this one's yours. Um, what would Buffy say is Seek's homework? I think she would say that our guarantee is meaningful learning experiences. Definitely. Definitely. Two two. <laughs> Buffy, I feel like we should have this last question, put a little pressure on Zoe. So we're, we're going to let you off the hook, but this one's going to be for Zoe. Zoe, this one's for you. Here we go. Can you finish this sentence for Buffy? How we spend our time is dot, dot, dot. How we enact our values. Three yep. for three, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get some virtual snaps. <laughs> you guys are champions. You're a champion. Thank you for playing along with that fun game. All right, here we are. We're at the point in time now uh, where this is all about our participants. Participants, we're going to open up two breakout rooms for the next 15, 20 minutes. This is designed for you to be able to interact in an intimate way with each of our dynamic leaders on the webinar today. Uh, you'll have your chance to pick by topic which room you would like to go into. Uh, you'll be able to ask questions. They're going to share a little bit more in detail. They'll share some resources as well. This is a really good chance for you to get hands-on experience with some of the different topics. So we're at the, the tail end of our time together. I don't know about you, but I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation, thoroughly enjoyed picking the brains of two amazing leaders as we come to a close, I uh, just want to take advantage of the opportunity to just give you the floor, give you the floor and share some closing comments for our guests, whatever may be on your excited uh, above the just okay line that you mentioned earlier in the webinar, Buffy, but whatever's on your mind, I want to offer you the floor uh, for some closing comments uh, for our guests. We'll share a little bit more information uh, after closing comments here. Zoe, I'd love to start with you for uh, mm -hmm. some comments for our guests, please. Sure. I mean, it's a broad prompt, but I really just, um, I'm coming out of the breakout room thinking about just the excitement about our portfolio defense process and how so many schools are thinking about this. And what it makes me think of is I think it's schools reflecting on what they value the most and how to show learning in ways that's really good for students. It's good for kids and is going to be transferable to their future because our future is uncertain, right? Like students have to be doing a lot of different things. They have a lot of pressures on them. And so I think it's really exciting to me when schools are trying to really identify what is it that we care about and what do we know is good for kids and let's do that. And so I really wanna thank you for all your questions today and the time to, you, you can hear how excited we get about these things because you know we've spent a lot of time working on them. And something I shared in the breakout room also is that we at Seeks, we're always learning as well, right? We're in this iterative process. We're never going to tell you that what we're doing is perfect and it's been fine-tuned and is completely, you know, run it exactly as this is because everything is context dependent and we're also learning. And every year that we try to get better in something, that we try to grow, that's what happens, right? We 
refine these systems and we get better and we think about what we want to improve in. And so thank you for this time today. Um, I'll hand it over to Buffy. <laughs> yeah, I will. Let me see if I can tie three things together. One is, is, um, you know, Marlon, you're like, oh, uh, you're above. Okay. Like, I think, you know, that that was not actually what the okay was that I was conveying. <laughs> um okay can mean a whole lot of different things like a c like a c can mean a whole lot of different things but like okay can mean a whole lot of different things and so i want to actually pull it back to like what we were just talking about in our breakout room which is um balancing opportunities and limitations right there's so much opportunity in a school like ours and in an innovative school like ours and there's also limitations and um you know today's been a hard day it's been a hard week it's been a hard couple weeks like there are hard things all the time so now I'm going to pull my third thing, which is how you spend your time is how you enact your values, right? That was the sentence that Zoe finished of mine. And it's related maybe even to a fourth thing that what Zoe was just talking about is like, yeah, it's what all schools can and should do. What do you value? And then build, like that's what we did. We built our school schedule. I, I linked it earlier in the chat, but it's worth like looking at. We built our school schedule around what we value in a school. But it's also a good reflection for me as a leader. What do I value? I value the fact that we built a school that we are really proud of. And even though there's hard stuff that's happening in it every day, it's also really nice to be in a space where people are like, that's cool. That's cool. Tell us more about that. And Marlon has so much energy to share with us, right? Like I value this. So I built time into my day to do this in the middle of all the hard stuff, right? So it's just kind of like pulling a lot of those pieces of things that we talked about together. It is no one, no one would ever say school leadership is easy, um, but it is really valuable. Before I share some uh, closing comments here, uh, we had a chance to learn a center collaborative team several weeks ago to just take a trip out uh, and spend the day at SEEKS. And I would say the team was just blown away about the, the experience that learners are getting. I mean, just some unbelievable learners uh, doing some amazing things out there. We got back in the car, uh, van one shout out just for the record, but we got back in the, in the car and we said, we need more people to know across the world what's happening at this school. So Buffy, if you could just, I don't know, take 45 seconds or a minute or two minutes or take 20 if you want 20, it doesn't matter to me, but just want to offer you a chance to just uh, just share a message uh, that, yeah. that you want other people across this world to know about your school so more people are aware of what's happening. I don't know. Things that, there's so many things to share about our school that um, that we did. We did build a school around, around what we value, um, but maybe this is a maybe this is the prompt you're trying to give me is that we just this year sort of launched uh our sharing hub where we're inviting other folks to come we've been inviting folks to come take tours of our school anytime so you guys are all welcome to do that we're also offering professional development uh that we started this year um and so i'm going to just pop that into the zoom chat if you want to take a look i recognize we're in the middle of the pacific ocean not necessarily accessible for everyone but also an opportunity if you have professional development funds to come uh, spend some time, see what we're up to. Um, Zoe, anything you want to add? I don't, well, just that if you start going on our website, part of what we've been working on is documenting, like there's a lot there. And if you see something that we didn't talk about today, you know, feel free to contact us um, where there's a lot that goes into our school and a lot behind the scenes, obviously that you won't see, but there's, I don't know, there's a lot of cool stuff on our website. So if you're interested, read about us. Yeah. Well, if you get a chance uh, sometime today, just throw some virtual snaps up for our two guests from Seek, Zoe and Buffy. So grateful for your time. So grateful for the gems and knowledge that you shared throughout this webinar experience for our participants. Really enjoyed your willingness and courage to be able to make yourselves vulnerable in the breakout rooms to just share some conversations, some resources and approaches with our participants. For our participants, we did record the webinar uh, post event. You'll get an email with the link in it. That way you can go back and uh, listen all over again and pull out some additional gems uh, to apply to your practice. On behalf of the Learner Center Collaborative Team, we just want to say thank you for your service. You're the most important people in the world, and that's you, educators. Yes, the most important people in the world. We see you. We hear you. We value. We appreciate everything you're doing for kids across this country and across the world. So thank you for your service. Have a great rest of the day. day. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to you continuing to be part of the Learner Center Collaborative family. Take care, everyone. Thank you.